Today's episode of Beyond the Mask is presented by the team at CRNA Financial Planning. Get a free consultation today to be guided through the complexities of investing and financial planning. Just visit crnafinancialplanning.com. Beyond the Mask is also sponsored by crnaeducation.com. CRNAs, you can get the CE credits you need by just going to crnaeducation.com. They have over 100 AANA prior approved credits, all four core CPC modules, and even over 40 pharmacology credits. No subscriptions, it's all online and mobile friendly. Just go to crnaeducation.com. And don't forget, listening to our podcast can earn you Class B credits. For more information on how you can submit them, check out our CE Credit tab on our website, beyondthemaskpodcast.com. Welcome to Beyond the Mask, innovation and opportunities for CRNAs and advanced practice nurses with certified financial planner Jeremy Stanley and CRNA Sharon Pierce. Jeremy Stanley has worked with CRNAs for more than 23 years, and Sharon Pierce is a former president of the AANA and the NCANA. Join us as we leave the operating room and learn the latest in the CRNA and advanced practice nurse industries. Beyond the Mask starts in 10, 9, 8, 7. Hey there, this is Sharon. I am in Myrtle Beach doing Goddess Weekend with some of my girlfriends. And unfortunately, Jeremy couldn't join me here. We wouldn't want him here anyway. He does not fit the bill of Goddess. He does not. (laughs) However, listeners, I have the pleasure of having the company of my guest co-host and friend, Tracy Castleman, down here. Of course, she's a goddess, so she's down here for the week with me. And we've got a great guest today, don't we, Tracy? Yes, we do. Uh, See, Jeremy could not do this interview with me. He would be totally lost. So I'm so glad you're here with me. So just in case our listeners have forgotten you, which I know they could not, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Tracy, before we get started? Hi, everybody. I'm Tracy Castleman, a nurse anesthetist who practices in New Jersey, started off in New York, made my way down south a little bit. I've been practicing in a hospital for a long time. I teach fabulous students from the Rutgers University Nursing Anesthesia Program. I should say residents, not students. There you go. I teach them clinically, and um, I've been active on my state level, nationally, and I currently am the president of Angiana Cares, the charitable arm of the state association. And the only state that has a charitable arm. I believe so. Yeah, Yes, y'all are way ahead of your time. So today we have with us Roxanne McMurray. So Roxanne, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of introduce your topic? Yes, so I am a longtime CRNA, over 30 years. I'm also a former educator at the University of Minnesota. I was an associate professor up there and also associate uh, program director. And then I saw a need in our airway management tools. So I'm an inventor now. So I started up McMurray Medical in 2016, uh, launched a device to improve basic airway management. And here we are today, improving improving our outcomes and uh, with patients and opening up the airway to keep them breathing. That's important. I remember the first time I saw this in the exhibit hall a few years ago, and uh, I just loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved the idea of it. It was something absolutely that we need. I do. I know you do a lot of endoscopy. Mm, Don't I? But in the hospital setting, I do a lot of patients with airway challenges. So I loved this device. So Roxanne, why don't you tell us kind of your aha moment and the whole genesis of how this got started? It's always fascinating to me how smart CRNAs are. (laughs) You know, when I saw your airway, it's something we've all kind of rigged up Mm -hmm. and made a workaround, but you took action and did something about it, which says something about you too. So tell us that whole process. You know, sitting on the sidelines and and standing back and assessing about airway management or patients, and it's like, why are we starting to do a chin lift draw thrust more? Our patients are changing. They were getting heavier in the 1990s to early 2000s. Propofol was evolving. So now we could do a great deep sedation or deep mat, whatever you want to call it, or a room air general. Room air general. (laughs) (laughs) And 
our patients were comfortable. Our surgeons loved it because the turnaround time was diminished. Mm -hmm. Our patients loved it because they could bypass the phase one recovery room. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, But our patients were obstructing their airways, even with using the oral airway, uh, 80% of the time we're doing a jaw thrust. Mm -hmm. Our hands are getting tired. We're strapped to our patient uh, unless Mm -hmm. we let the jaw fall and they obstruct their airway. Our patients are waking up with more pain in their jaw sometimes than their incisional pain. Mm -hmm. And their jaws are getting bruised and dislocated. There is a suit going on right now that was brought to my attention. A patient had a dislocated jaw post a deep sedation because the anesthesia provider was cranking on their jaw to keep them breathing. You know, Mm -hmm. what, what a conundrum. So yeah, see, breathing or not. Yeah, that one just <laughs> seems obvious. You wouldn't have any suit to file. Well, it would be a different yeah. suit if yeah. you didn't make it through the case. But yeah. but right, I get it. Right. Yeah, we're doing jaw thrusts a lot more and, and we're tired of it. So mm-hmm. then we started creating other tools on the side and doing workarounds and using tools off label. And with that, I stood back and said, okay, we have a problem here. What are we doing about it? And I didn't see anyone else coming up with a solution. And so I took that nasal airway as a prototype, figured out what can we do to make it safe for oral use. Because mm. we've a, been using, what? I use those nasal trumpets. Yeah, and and sometimes I put do. three in, you yeah. know, in order, especially with the um, morbidly yeah. obese patient without a chin on their back for uh, knee replacement mm-hmm. under spinal with sedation. Mm-hmm. Put two in, one in each nose. No, in the, you know, I'll put a couple in the mouth. Sometimes one in the nose. And I'll come in. I don't get them that deep. I try not to. Yeah. But I'll come in and see people have a nasal trumpet in, an oral airway in, a mask on their face. Done all the that. The roll under the jo- under the shoulder, and you know that the end tidal CO two has to be really high. Yeah, but sometimes not... that helps you keep them asleep. Well. <laughs> But it's uncomfortable. No. I, yeah. I understand. I, it's an uncomfortable way to sit there and just wait for your patient to fall over the cliff. Mm-hmm. And why is an oral airway or the nasal airway in the nose working? Because well, it's, it's that tissue by mm-hmm. the, right by the epiglottis. And that's why we're doing a jaw thrust mm-hmm. so frequently. Well, we have to... you made a good point in that if our hands are free, we can be doing other things. And, you know, we've all had days when your hands are just aching from holding on to these patient airways. Whenever I do uppers, one of the doctors laughs at me and he said, it looks like I'm wrestling the patients because I get bent way over in the bed and I've got both hands on their airway and I've got my ear down there so I can hear them because you've got your oxygen turned up so high, your end title won't pick up. It's, it's blowing it off and you can't see it so I can just hear it. Instead, he goes, it looks like you're kissing the patient, Sharon. I'm like, I'll do whatever I have to mm-hmm. to maintain this airway. So I need yeah. it. I need yeah. some of these airways in the office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I say, don't make me swing my leg over the cart to help them, you know, stay still. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so how yeah. long did this process take you, though, Roxanne, from – the time of the genesis in your brain mm-hmm. to when you got something, you had to have had to have a 3D prototype done, I'm sure. It started with the patent. So patent search. Uh, I did that on my own. And then I hired a, a patent attorney. And I was living up in the Twin Cities at the time. And that's a hub for medical devices. Sure. Yeah, Medtronic, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's for St. Jude. So I have them finding a medical patent attorney was it was difficult because a lot of them were being used by those huge um, companies, oh. organizations. Mm-hmm. So I had to go out of state. So I developed a, um, a patent that was issued in 2013. And then my family asked me, now what are you going to do? Now, what are you going to do with this patent? Just let me ask you, how much was the patent attorney, just out of curiosity, if you don't mind sharing? No, so it, it varies. Um, mine was probably around... 5,000, but it was a, a medical patent attorney. But now uh, we have a top-notch patent attorney that's located in the Twin Cities, and he's very expensive, but he's good. Okay. Because your your IP is only as good as, you know, the issue patent, right? So you want something, someone who's good at it. So anyway, my, my kids said, what are you going to do with this patent? It's like, oh, 
great. Now I got to do something with it. So I came up with a, a prototype and then uh, you have to test it. My husband was having a hernia surgery and a girlfriend of mine was providing the anesthesia. And so he was the first recipient of the, <laughs> the guinea airway because we had to make sure it worked. And he has sleep apnea and it worked great. So, wow. So, so you had to, that. you had to do a, your, the prototype. It's a 3D that they have to go in and make the mm-hmm. airway. Mm-hmm. And surely you had whoever did your 3D sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement oh, yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. And then how many patients did you practice on with your prototype besides your husband? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so after, <laughs> so after the, um, we knew it was the right diameter and the right length and we got that elongated by clock um, correct then we went and we uh, formed McMurray Medical in 2016 and then we found a manufacturer mm. and we it took a good year to find a manufacturer I bet to make the yeah because we were a no-name company with an no-name product mm-hmm. and for them to take us on we're very, so very this helpful. is already three years 2013 sure now we're up to 2016 The McMurray Enhanced Airway is manufactured in the U.S. And we could have done it pennies on the dollar Mm -hmm. if we went to China or to Mexico. But we wanted the quality control here in the U.S. And came COVID, we were very grateful that we were manufacturing in the U.S. Because all our ratings come from the U.S. as well. So we we didn't have that constraint of um, transportation and the shutdown of uh, different supplies. We had all our supplies manufactured here in the U.S. And after manufacturing, then you have to do testing on it. You have to be testing not only on the device itself as in a patient, but testing on transportation. And that gets expensive. You have to do like a shake and bake. Wait, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. I know. I I had no idea. Tell us what that means exactly. So they, um, so when you have like an expiration date on a, on a, on a medical device or even on food, they have to test it how long it can last in that container or in that package. And so you have to pay people to evaluate that. Oh, Lord. And how much did that cost? Uh, It's very expensive. Yeah. Attention all certified nurse anesthetists. Are you in need of a reliable and quality continuing education option? Well, look no further than crnaeducation.com. We are an NBCRNA recognized provider offering all four core CPC modules to meet your certification requirements. You can choose from more than 100 AANA prior approved Class A CE credits with 43 articles covering a wide range of anesthesia topics. Need pharmacology CE credits? Well, we've got you covered there as well with over 40 pharmacology CE credits available. All credits are completed online and are mobile friendly. Choose articles worth one, two, or three credits. There's no subscriptions, no hidden fees, just the CE credits you need when you need them. Owned by CRNAs since 2011, you can trust in our commitment to your education. And customer service is always a quick email or phone call or even text away. To sign up and find out more about our education options, visit crnaeducation.com, your partner in continuing education. That's crnaeducation.com. So tell me, though, I've seen your product. It's a pretty solid product. How can they figure, at what point would they say it deteriorates or it is no longer able to do the job that it was intended to? How can they do that if the product hasn't been out that long? They um, expedite. They shake, they bake it, like at temperatures to see when it starts to disintegrate. Ah, okay. That's what you meant by shake and bake. See, we used to call the ECT treatments shake and bake. Oh, Oh, we didn't call them that. (laughs) They try to hurt it. Right. Try to make it disintegrate. Yes. And for each year that you add to your expiration date, it costs more money. So how, what's what? the expiration date on yours, for instance? Boy, this could be a whole so conversation did, of producing something. Yes. Yeah, so originally it was one year. And then we um, we saved some products from that initial run mm-hmm. for manufacturing. And then we did um, natural shelf life as well. Okay. So now we have up to three years for expiration. And how long is an average bite block 
like an oral airway? How long is the shelf life on I think two the years, traditional yeah. oral airway? Oh, that's a great question. Do they even expire? Oh, They're they plastic. Do. No, they, they do have an expiration date on it. I think it's a couple of years or so because just like your LMAs, because we keep LMAs on our carts and endoscopy and you never use them. Well, that's not quite true. I think I've used four or five and many, yeah. many moons, but um, uh-huh. you, you have to rotate airway, them out, but they have an expiration date on them, but we'll all be looking whenever we go. Yeah, to But work. you know what? They work perfectly well in mission work. Yeah. That's well, where they all I, go. Yeah. And well, I, that's I send what I all use. of them. Yeah. I send all of them. And of course we know they all yeah. work. It's just a, a thing. It's because they haven't spent more money or to do the prolonged expiration time. Isn't that interesting? You got to spend more money, money to get yeah. a longer expiration. Either time. that, or they just don't want them sitting on the shelf because the longer it sits on the shelf, the less you need to order more product. Well, I think there's, there's that too. Yes. A little bit. Not of... that we don't use oral airways all the time now, mm-hmm. because of exactly what she said. Our patient demographic has changed. Well, the first time I met you, Roxanne, and we were talking about this, the the Goodell airways that we use, they've been in what a hundred years they've not been adapted what was it you told me just think of Uh, what what people look like the shape of people were not as heavy they were not as tall right they didn't live as long necessarily or if they did they didn't live as long with as much disease as we have now jaws must have been better well i can remember (laughs) i can remember when i first started office anesthesia we did nobody with a bmi of 40 that was the cutoff yeah. when I first started giving No, there is no cutoff. No, I've done a 59 in the yeah. office. But, I mean, she looked like she could swallow a lion's head, so I know she was going to be all right. But um, the rest of her body was just, mm-hmm. I opened up the curtain, and you know when your heart falls, when you open up the curtain and see what your next patient looks like. <laughs> Even the pictures that they have on the on our system – Maybe a picture that's 20 years old because my doc's been in practice a long time. So I think this is what I'm getting. And then I walk out and open the curtain and they've gained 100 pounds since their picture. So, yeah. Yeah. And when, you know, our basic airway tools, our our go-to airway tools haven't been redesigned to keep up with the evolving patient and procedures and our anesthesia. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what's caused this issue. And look at look at our advanced airway tools and how they kept up yes. with Evolve mm-hmm. in the times. Now we have articulating bougies. They're wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, yep. again, we, we started the bariatric uh, program at the hospital I was at in like 2005. And those patients, probably BMI was... 45 something like that and you know I just did a knee at the hospital and it was 66 BMI I did a c-section well I helped put in the epidural which wound up being the continuous spinal which was the best gift of all in a woman whose BMI was 78 (sighs) as we're sitting down here at goddess week you can pull apart (laughs) pull apart cinnamon rolls but (laughs) but we won't get that (laughs) We won't get up to those BMIs she couldn't even, Yeah. So tell me, um, Roxanne, looking at the picture, and, I, and I've looked at your product, I just cannot remember the length, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, the biggest part is, like you said, a stable bite block, and it goes down longer to be able to separate the tissue, to be able to move air. But some of my BMI of 58, having their knee done or their hand done, are only five foot versus the man who is oh, six, six one six. and yeah. he weighs four hundred and ten pounds. So, is yep. are there? Tell me about the different sizes and the lengths, because I assume yeah. that the I can't use the same one obviously just in the, in each in both people my five foot lady and my six foot five man. Yes, the size four, which is our our current uh, MEA size, we're I'm sure well, I'm only a size four. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So they fit. So the size four fits five feet in height to six feet in height, roughly. And you don't have to have the flange of the MA all the way to the corner of the lips. Okay. okay. You can you can tweak where the distal tip sits by just pulling it out. Okay. Mouth. Does that make sense? Yes. You just have to have on that elongated bike block. That's why that bike block is elongated because it gives you multiple sizes within one, which fits 
most of the population. Okay. Right? One size fits most. Now, yes. And besides opening the airway, it does two other things. It You can intubate around it and provide oxygen. Huh. So apneic oxygenation, and that's uh, on our ASA yes. new airway algorithm for difficult airway management mm-hmm. of 2022. So you can put it on the left side, hook it up to your circuit, tuck that circuit underneath the patient's head so it doesn't, the MEA doesn't go flipping out with the, the weight of the circuit. And then you can intubate around it and you get that oxygen down right where it's needed versus a nasal cannula. If the patient has a, a septal defect, mm-hmm. you're not going to get the benefit of the oxygen as much as it being closer down by the vocal cords. And also with the uh, nasal CPAP or the high flow nasal oxygen, the MEA is so easy to use. You just plop it in. It's also a nice addition if you're doing a fiber optic, fiber optic Mm -hmm. nasal, fiber Mm -hmm. optic, because you can continue to oxygenate while you're, because unless you're doing that fiber optic every day, it takes a few seconds. And that's the patient who often can't afford to go without oxygen. Right. Right. And the other thing you can ventilate with that you can use the MEA for. Yeah. Yeah. You showed me how you can take the connector from endotracheal tube and Am I correct? And you can actually yep. ventilate mm-hmm. through it. Yep. Yep. The MEA does, um, it is packaged with a connector. Okay. Uh, and, and you can do um, intraoral positive pressure ventilation instead of a mask and leaking around the mask as a, you know, 30% of our adult uh-huh. males have beards now. So it is hard to get that positive pressure mask fit. This bypasses uh, mass variables for difficulty and you can get the oxygen closer again um, to where it's needed versus leaking around the mask. You just have to pinch the nares closed manually with your index finger and your thumb, or you can use the straight connector, attach it to the MEA, put it through the hole in the mask, and then put your circuit on top. That yeah. is really easy. And I tell you, it's it's all about basic airway management, mm-hmm. opening the airway and ventilating. And when we can do those two things, we don't have to go down that difficult airway algorithm as quickly as as if we didn't have a device like this. I am thinking at my facility, we do um, hemorrhoids in the jackknife position under sedation. Oh, my. And wow, uh, this would be, or the pilonidal cyst on the 19-year-old college kid who comes home after finals week, and we're going to do the pilonidal prone with Mm -hmm. a little jackknife under sedation, local sedation. This would make That's my life so much, right oh yeah, this would make my life so much easier <laughs> sliding this in before I roll them over because there is more than one time that I'm pulling on the jaw with them in prone position sure. because they usually have yes. airway problems, but, and they're usually men and you know, they don't want to be awake at all. Yeah. And well, who dr- does? No, um, but for that, but what is it? Some of the literature that you had sent us before 30 to 80 percent of people have some kind of obstruction. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking about. Boy, this is a game changer. Beyond the Mask is made possible by the team at CRNA Financial Planning. With almost two decades of experience, the firm guides CRNAs through the complexities of investing and financial planning. Schedule a free consultation today by calling 855-304-3748 or go online to crnafinancialplanning.com. So we've talked about why it's better than other tools we have. So tell me about some of the outcomes that you're seeing with your airway, because I'm sure you're getting a lot of commentary and anecdotal Mm -hmm. stories. Yes. So testimonials, uh, that's, that's, that keeps me going. You know, when you're spending a lot of money, like we talked about, you know, just with a new device and we're a bootstrap company, there's only five of us for investors and, you know, all the money's coming from us. It's great to have those testimonies to keep us going. So hearing the positive testimonies and uh, case studies, uh, there is a one that was written and um, released in anesthesiology news where a CRNA uh, could not ventilate a patient. They were going down that difficult airway algorithm and they couldn't mass ventilate. They, the oral airway didn't work. The, they couldn't intubate. And mm-hmm. the CRNA said, oh, instead of doing emergency um, tracheostomy because they were in the operating room, they said, let's just use this, uh, this purple device. She calls it the purple device. Yeah. <laughs> and so she pulled it out of her pocket, plopped it in, and they could ventilate. 
Mm. I want to know why they made it purple. But I would also consider um, Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation. Have they? I'm sure you've spoken to them about this. This should be in the difficult Wouldn't that airway be cool cart. if a CRNA device would be in the algorithm? Yes, and in the carts. Recommend that they're in, in every cart. And every, in, in. Yeah, what have you done about that? We, <laughs> we need to get that yeah, in there. So APSF reached out to me, and I'm joining their airway committee. Excellent. Nice. I like that. You should be. So you were going to tell us why it's purple. So why is it purple? Yeah, a number of reasons. The Minnesota state color is purple because of the Vikings, but also because of Prince. Mm -hmm. Purple rain. Purple rain. Yeah. Tracy Uh, Young, did you hear that? Purple rain. There's an inside story, but go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) And also, purple is the color of renewal. Hmm. And royalty. It is, yeah. Yes, and lastly, is because you can find it in the sheets. Oh, I like that. Yes, you can. And it's not in the, so like we have um, yellow, green, there, uh, there's mm-hmm. other color coding to the oral airways. There's no purple, which yeah. really stands you, you know, helps you stand out too. But I love that. So it's, it does stand out in the sheets. That mm-hmm. was a great idea. You know, we're talking about all different scenarios, right? I know Sharon's big thing is endoscopy because she does a lot of endoscopy. I do a lot of joints. I'll have people on their back or on their side. Like I said, many of them are older. They have obstructive sleep apnea. They're overweight. That's why their joints are wearing down. A lot of these people use CPAP Mm -hmm. at home and they're talking about trying to um, bring in either using high flow nasal oxygen or using CPAP. There's a big push now for CPAP devices in the operating room. How does your device compare to those or why would they be an improvement over that as my choice? So the nasal CPAP or CPAP and high flow nasal oxygen, you have to set those up. You have to think about them ahead of time, right? Yep. The MEA can be easily stored in your cart. It takes up very little real estate. You open the package, open place and go. Uh, You don't have to twist it at all. You don't have any loot lubrication needed or tongue depressor, you just place it with a curve facing the hard palate and place between the molars and then size up or size down. So it's really easy to use. The other thing is that um, the nasal CPAP sometimes leaks through the mouth. So you're not getting the full benefit of that pressure. And it opens that distal pharyngeal tissue, uh, the same with the high flow nasal oxygen with pressure and it's limited by pressure up to 15 millimeter, uh, 15 centimeters of water for pressure. Well, uh, the- another thing that I just thought about, because sometimes, you know, they upchuck whenever you're doing a colonoscopy on some of these people. Mm-hmm. And I would be afraid if you've got a CPAP mask on them, they can aspirate because it'll blow it right back in. This way you True. can see it and, you know, it'll come out instead. So besides it being easy to place, it's affordable compared to those devices. And that's uh, where we do our comparison, not to the oral airway or to the nasal airway because they just go to the back of the tongue. We need to compare the MEA to devices that open that distal pharyngeal tissue. So high flow nasal oxygen and the nasal CPAP or the CPAP. uh, And they start anywhere from $80 on and up. The only thing with the MEA though, since it is placed orally, The patient has to be sleepy Mm -hmm. and have a negative gag reflex when you place it. And I recommend doing a chin lift. If they don't respond to a chin lift, they won't respond to the MEA being placed. Huh. All right. So you've put in a lot of years getting this to market, a lot of money. Have you reached your break-even point? Are you finally going in the in, into the black now? <laughs> Sounds like you were in the red uh, for for a, a number of years, which would mean it's a labor of love too. Yes. At that point, definitely. Um, yes, yeah. You know, we're seeing fruits of our labor and receiving. Uh, we received the American Nurses Association, the ANA Innovation of the Year Award in March, and that came with a stipend sponsored by Stryker. So that was really nice. Uh, We also received the EMS Innovation of the Year Award in 2021. So having um, funds that are coming from outside uh, along with sales increasing, uh, yes, we're seeing seeing some great fruits of our labor. I know we're talking about the airway and and how this is such a phenomenal advancement for our profession and for anybody who 
is involved in the airway, right? Which I never even thought about EMS, but that would be yes. perfect. Yes. Because their intubation skills are usually severely lacking right. anyway. But um, keeps them from killing people in the field. Yes. They get, well, break, the LMA them helped with that too yeah. in the combi too. But um, if you had to break down three, our friend Carol Dwyer loved to do oh, things no, the in trifecta. the trifecta. If somebody was to come to you and say, I have this great idea that I want to implement, what would be your top pieces of advice for a anybody who is looking to be an innovator to to create something new, bring something new to market? Because I'm sure that learning uh, curve for you was huge. Yes, yes. You know, um, my passion is at the head of the bed. I did not look to be an inventor right. at all. I just saw the big D. Um, number one is that you have to do your homework. You have to do a patent search. See what's out there uh, because you don't want to infringe on anyone's patent. The other thing is that you have to surround yourself with support system because mm. it is it's a labor of love. Like you said, Sharon. It, it takes a lot of time, but it takes a lot, a lot of money. I could have retired in a, in a nice place by now, but I just, I have the passion of improving airway management and improving outcomes and decreasing uh, hospital costs. Mm -hmm. Because when our patients have respiratory compromise, it's costing, you know, 50% of our uh, ICU admissions are from respiratory cardiac related. And that it just increases our hospitalization and the cost up to 7.8 billion is what I saw recently. But it's not just that cost. It's the cost to the provider. We are airway experts. Mm -hmm. And if we lose an airway and we can't recover that airway, the mental health cost is enormous. Right. And you're adding right. a tool. Oh, that's right. right. You're well, adding a tool for success that might not have been there and could be the difference between any provider. I'm going to say anybody uh, walking away saying, I should have, could have, what mm -hmm. else could I have done? Looking in that mirror and beating themselves up to... I don't want to say being the hero, but saving a patient and not having to go through all of that second guessing and or walking down that path of just self-destruction. Yeah. So, and that cost is priceless. Yeah. Well, I mean, just take a look at all of our hands. Mm -hmm. I, I draw up thousands and thousands of propofol syringes and then holding on to these airways. And some days, you know, after you've been holding on mm -hmm. in your hands, you look like Claw yeah. hands. Yeah, no, after 32 years, my thumbs are tired. Yeah. But it's that mental health piece. Clearly, sure. um, the cost of ICU and all that, that's what's going to register with an administrator, right? Mm -hmm. But mental health for the provider is enormous, too. Absolutely. So what's next, Roxanne? Yes. Well, my passion uh, is to bring it more out of the operating room uh, into the field of the opioid epidemic. It's tugging at my, my heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, the epidemic is only growing at alarming rates. Uh, accidental death to overdoses is surpassing motor vehicle accidents. I know. Mm, it's terrifying. And, you know, when CPR is hands-on only for chest compressions and we're not focused on the A and the B for opening the airway for the layperson, our patients, the victims of our, are waking up and at alarming rates, they're not getting oxygen to the brain. So what's happening? They're brain dead. It's somebody and was just talking about this with me too, and it's the way we're doing compression. There's a whole there's a whole new science. They're looking at the exactly what you're talking about, the neurological deficit after CPR of the rescue of the patient. Mm -hmm. And it's really a very low number of people who are fully mentally intact afterwards. And it is. Yes. It's an airway yep. thing, it's an oxygenation thing and delivery. Sure. Well, that makes sense. Yep. And drug overdose is the related is the mm -hmm. highest related uh, incident for or organ donation now because the, the drug overdose for brain death remains the single greatest etiology. Wow. So, so uh, we need simple, basic airway management. Sure. We need to open the airway, we need the A and the B back in the CPR. Mm -hmm. um, wh how do people get a hold of your airway? Tell us your website. Give us give us some deets. I hope my kids heard that. It makes me sound yeah. cool. No, <laughs> it makes them roll their eyes, Sharon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so mcmurraymed.com. That's M C M U R R A Y med, mm -hmm. M E D.com. mcmurraymed.com. We have a contact um, me page. Fill out that form. Uh, that's a great way to get a hold of us. I need to sit here and fill that out. I need, I need some in, my, in the office. And just in case, because um, I know Sharon at one point when we were reading through stuff, she, the acronym, you've said M E A mm -hmm. a couple of times. Tell yep. them why you, I'm not sure if everybody put two and two together and I'm not, 
I'm not dissing anybody out there. <laughs> Just sometimes, you know, we, we we throw around our alphabet soup. And when you are referencing MEA, it's the McMurray Enhanced Airway, which is the MEA. Um, and I think we should all be familiar with those three, three letters in airway management. Yeah. And we're the first distal pharyngeal mm-hmm. airway, which I refer to as the DPA. Okay. So... We're going to need a a glossary of terms (laughs) here. Use your MEA to get to the The DPA (laughs) (laughs) so that your patient's not DOA after CPR. Good. There you go. (laughs) Do the AB. That's good. So as we wrap this up, what would you like to conclude on, and what message would you like to leave with our listeners? Yeah, the the MEA is a fast, easy, efficient effective, affordable airway device. And it's made for for our patients of today, 21st century patients and procedures. Is and a- we can keep our patients breathing and reduce hypoxia and, and respiratory compromise. We have better patient and provider outcomes and we can reduce healthcare costs. So let's keep our patients breathing. Let's do better at basic airway management. I have a quick question. Is it, um, can you re-sterilize it? Is it reusable or is it a one-time only like other airway devices? It's a single, okay. single use. Also. So buy many. Yeah, buy a lot. Yeah, buy a, lot. <laughs> buy a box of 50 when you're ordering. <laughs> yeah, how does it come? A box of what? Yeah, a box of 10. A box, a box of, of 10, 10 individually, yep, individually wrapped. Okay, can somebody just buy a box of 10? Just to... Yep. Try or is there a minimum purchase order? <laughs> a box of ten. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, well, I've learned a lot today. How about you, Tracy? I have. I am just. Uh, thank you for doing this and for being passionate about um, uh, improving airway management. I think this is really cool what you did. I think it's going to be in the algorithm. One I day. think it needs to be in the algorithm. Yeah, I think it's going to be, and mm-hmm. it's so cool that it's going to be a CRNA. And we'll be able to say, we knew her when. Who builds the difficult airway algorithm? Who's in charge of it? The does it. They have a, a global network that they put together, and they revisit it. I think it's like every four years or so. And mm-hmm. they, they, they put this global network together of anesthesiologists and develop this. Yep, I'm working with uh, two of the key players. Oh, good. That's what I was wondering there, too. Yeah. Well, Well, congratulations. Thank you for talking with us about this. I hope um, I hope I have it. I keep it in my pocket. I haven't had to use it yet. And I've kept it in my pocket as my get out of jail free card. But I think I'm going to order a box or two and make sure everybody in my department has it to look at and think about it. Some hospitals are implementing throughout the whole system and putting it in all the code cards. I mean, we went from a small town hospital to... um, within a system, a large healthcare system, and everything is, um, you know, everybody has to be the same. So, but we can bring, we, we can bring it up the pipeline. I'm going to be doing that this week. Good for you. Mm-hmm. We'll be looking around that website here shortly. So Roxanne, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I didn't share how I met Roxanne. I was in Minnesota. Did I have fun? Uh, Tracy, <laughs> yeah, Tracy and I had went Uh, to Minnesota to visit our good friend Carol Deutscher and I was in the airport lounge waiting to catch my flight and I heard somebody say Sharon and I looked around and this lady says you're Sharon Pierce aren't you and I said yes do I know you and she said my name is Roxanne McMurray and so we sat in the in the lounge and talked for a while and guess what she had one of her devices in her of purse she did <laughs> and you never know me. when you need one on a plane that's for sure <laughs> yeah, yeah and, right and, and Sharon, Sharon you, see what I have on today I saw your pen uh, <laughs> of course she had an airway I've got a blingy CRNA <laughs> pen she's going to save more people than I will yes she is <laughs> So we all have our strengths. That's it. Mine is the blingy CRNA pen. So, but thank you for joining us today, Roxanne. Thank you for everything you're doing. CRNAs are definitely the smartest people I know, and you are absolutely proving that in all the work that you have done. But I think it's a wrap. I think so too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on, Sharon. Oh, you this are was so a real well. treat for me to be on this one too. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much. And thanks for listening to Beyond the Mass with the absent Jeremy Stanley, myself, Sharon Pierce, and guest Tracy Castleman. 
If you like our show and want to help us grow, Tracy, can you tell our listeners how to help the show grow? The best way to help is to like the show, share it on social media, and tell your friends and leave a review, but make it positive. As Jeremy says, we all know there's enough negativity in the world. Beyond the Mask is in the top 50 medical podcasts in the country and number one in the CRNA community's heart. You are right. Thank you to all our listeners. Until the next time. Hi, this is Jackie Rolls, President of the International Federation of Nurse Anesthetists and President and Founder of Our Hearts, Your Hands, a global anesthesia support community that takes donations to allow nurse anesthetists in low and middle income countries to go to educational programs, buy equipment, or textbooks. Your donations are tax deductible, and we would appreciate your support. Be sure to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere you like to listen to shows. Also, be sure to check out beyondthemaskpodcast.com. Each episode is posted there with a corresponding blog post, and we timestamp important parts of the episode to help you quickly get to the content you're looking for. Also, check out the special series section on the site. You can follow along and catch up on the CRNA History Series, episodes specifically about political conversations in the industry, or try the CRNA Personal Finance Series. It's all on beyondthemaskpodcast.com. And if you have a question for the show or want to be a guest or even suggest a particular topic, fill out the contact form on the site or send an email directly to us at info at beyondthemaskpodcast.com. And lastly, let's take the conversation social. Check out our Beyond the Mask podcast Facebook page and Facebook group.